Hey guys, oh, it's Pearl again and welcome back to my channel. Today we have got a really simple dish and by the way, this is for Jackie from the UK. You requested this a couple of weeks ago and I've taken so long to do it. So Jackie, this one is for you and I know Sherelle, you love my dishes as well and everyone else who's commented about my cooking. Thank you very much guys for the likes, thank you for the comments, thank you for following my channel, it is amazing to have you guys with me. So today uh, you saw the pictures of the ingredients, it's a simple dish that is super healthy, super easy to make, all in one pot, you know I'm a one pot kind of girl, the quicker it goes the better for me, especially when you're cooking for a family. So this is a nice simple dish that is easy, healthy and quick to make. All right, so we are making tuna pasta. Let's talk about these ingredients. So today we're using um, spaghetti. Is it spaghetti? Spaghetti number eight, any size spaghetti will do. Tagliatelle, you can even use penne, you can use whatever you like. So we're going to use a packet and a half because we're going to feed around six people, six, seven people. So I've got two packets, so we're going to use a packet and a half. You can use any pepper. You can, I like the green pepper, but then the green pepper kind of looks weird in the pasta. So we're going to use the yellow pepper and a brown onion. Here's my little secret ingredient. It's sun-dried tomatoes. It just gives that bit of a punch to that fish flavor. I'm going to be using three tins of tuna. So bear in mind if you're cooking for two people, one tin of tuna is more than enough. Or if you're cooking for yourself, one tin of tuna is enough and half a packet. So just sort of use your discretion on how much so the more tuna you like or more fish you like in it go ahead one thing i don't have yet that you can add that really adds a nice burst of flavor is anchovies um so if you have anchovies you add that in right at the end of the dish and it gives another punch of exciting flavor you know two things i always have in my cupboard whole peeled tomato uh, whole peeled italian tomatoes and of course onion and tomato mix this creates a nice saucy flavor we're always going to use, you can use pecorino cheese, it's back to front, but you can use pecorino cheese, you can use hard cheese, you could use parmigiano, whatever you like. Plain garlic. Plain garlic, I like to buy crushed and used, it's easy. I'm one of those chicks that like to make stuff quick and easy. But I also like the ginger and garlic, because ginger and garlic is, you know, the, gin, the health benefits of ginger is unbelievable. So... I suppose if I was saying an Italian dish, I'd get kicked in the bum because I'm adding this ginger to it. But, and of course, a nice bottle of white wine to go with the food. Right, so guys, we're going to start with cutting that onion. And I'm not going to let you watch me cut the onion. So once that's ready, we're going to get back to you and we'll get started with the cooking. So here we go. All right, just a couple of health benefits. Like, I'm always a believer, you don't just eat food because you have to eat food. We're going to talk about onions, we're going to talk about bell peppers. What, why do we need to eat these kinds of fruits and veg? So while I'm cutting, I'm going to show you how I'm cutting this. So have a look at this. All right, so this is the yellow bell pepper. You can see that I'm cutting it pretty fine. I like it fine. So while I'm cutting it and you're watching me cut it, bell peppers are packed with vitamins they are low in calories so they're excellent to eat raw they're excellent to eat cooked it doesn't matter they are also an excellent source of vitamin a vitamin c and potassium they contain a healthy dose of fiber folate and iron so guys this is a fantastic healthy low calorie eating piece of veggie or fruit if you want to call it that because of its color it's absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. So that's our yellow. So whether it's yellow or red or green, it really, really doesn't matter. So you can see I'm cutting them really nice and fine. All right, so as we're cutting this onion, you can see I like to cut mine fine. What are the health benefits of eating onion? Like some people say, I don't like onion. Like you can see I've cut mine really, really small. So just to let you know, that the health benefits of onion, they have many, they are packed with nutrients, they're packed with antioxidants, they can help fight cancer, um, they're very good for digestion, so onion is good, they have antibacterial properties and they're also known to help with bone density, so if you're looking for different foods that can help with these certain sort of aspects, the onion, the good old onion is the best way, not just to add flavor, but to add some of those macro and micronutrients um, towards your um Diet. So here's our onion. I'm going to get that ready into a bowl and then we're going to get cooking, people. Don't forget, guys, 
while we are before you starting all of this which i've done already i've put on my my pasta pot with water remember you do not boil your pasta unless it's of course the water is bubbling and boiling and i'll show you that before we add our pasta there so great stuff here we go all right guys a couple more ingredients that we're going to need these are the dry ingredients i'm just going to pull it down so you guys can see okay so i have got my italian herbs remember these are the ingredients i always say i keep in my cupboard no matter and they i cook literally everything with this chicken stock and remember i said to you guys you could use fresh chicken stock powdered chicken stock that's absolutely up to you extra virgin olive oil and of course our garlic and ginger as you see it here what i'm going to do is i'm going to re-angle the pan now i'm using a wok pan so that you guys can actually see what's going on I've put um, about a quarter cup of olive oil. I like really oily food and whatever. So now we're going to add the onion. So we cut one onion now. If you like your sauce um, very thick, then you could add a really large onion. Or if you like your sauce not too, without too much chunks in it, you could also just basically um, use just... A little less onion, a little less of all that. I like it nice and saucy and thick and juicy. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one spoon, nice big spoon of garlic and ginger. Remember, I'm always about that garlic and ginger. And of course, raw garlic. Now, I normally, like I said, I buy my crushed. You can use yours absolutely fresh. It doesn't matter. Nice big spoon of garlic. Adds excellent flavor to your food. So we're going to let that fry up a little bit and we're going to clean up here and make this look a little bit better. I'll show you how this cooks. Remember, whenever we're cooking this, I'm always telling you that we need to cook until it's see-through. So let's just give this a nice little mix as it starts to fry up. I'm never fussy about is the oil really hot or whatever. I just put it in because, you know, who's got time to make sure every little detail of temperature is hot. So we're going to allow that to cook up. And then once this is ready, we're going to be adding three simple things to it. And it's done, guys. It's done. So here we go. We wait for that. All right. You can see this is cooking up really nicely. And you know, I'm all about the health benefits of the food we eat. And now let's talk about the health benefits of garlic. Now, garlic is fantastic for lowering cholesterol. And it's also very good for athletes' performance. It's excellent for your skin. Let's not forget about the whole mosquito thing. I believe that is, I don't know if it's a myth, but it also can prevent the arteries from hardening and it can reduce heart disease. So while this is cooking up, you can see we're starting to get that see-through feel. We're going to start preparing the canned tomatoes. So let that cook another couple of minutes. And like I said, as soon as it is ready, we will add tomatoes. Okay, so here we've got our sun-dried tomatoes. We're going to use two teaspoons of sun-dried tomato. Again, this is going to add a nice punch of flavor. And it's really an optional extra. It's not something you have to use. What we're going to do now is just get rid of some of this juice because this is whole peeled tomatoes. We want to keep the dish as rustic as possible. So all we're going to do with this is we're going to cut them up nice and rustic. You get off, rid of the edge of the whoops, you see. The messy cook once again. So all we want to do with that is just cut them up nice and rustically. And just some health benefits of the tomato. Now, if you remember, the tomato has that special um, substance called lycopene or lysopene, if you want to call it that. It gives it that lovely fresh color. And of course, it, it has lots of micronutrients, such as potassium, vitamin B, vitamin E. And again, it's going to protect our cells from damage, much like this ly lycopene helps it against the UV rays of the sun, it's going to protect um, um, ourselves from damage. So we're going to put that in. Now let's hope this messy cook doesn't make too much of a mess as we get in these tomatoes. Now we're going to cook those tomatoes for a good 15, 15 minutes because there's nothing worse than raw tomatoes. So as that, I'm sorry, raw because it's making a mess. Can you see that? Let's just and now we're going to mix that up a little bit. And then we're actually just going to use um, a half a tin of tomato and onion mix just to add some more sauce. Depending on how saucy you want it to be, 
um, will determine how much of the um, tomato you add. So we just want to get rid of some of the chunks because I cut some of it a little too rustic and I know my family will moan about that. So if you have a family like mine who's really, really fussy, everything has to be perfect, little onions and all of that. Okay, so we're going to add that half a tin. Again, it's just to add more of a sauce in. Let's get rid of that mess because you know we're naughty. All right, so we're using three tins. Again, remember, if you are cooking for two people, you're going to use that half an onion, half and half. You're going to sort of break it down and make it less for who you want. If you're cooking for more people, go ahead and double the... Um, by the way, it's going to go a long way. So the more pasta you add, um, of course, the dish is going to go. So yeah, we got two chicken stock. Now remember, I don't really cook with salt. This is quite high in salt, so it's more than enough. Let's throw that so we don't look too messy. And we're going to mix that a little bit. We're going to add our black pepper. And of course, you know I love my Italian herb. So we're going to cover that in that strong. You can see, I'm going to say that I use about three tablespoons. Again, this is something that I like. I like the smell of the herbs and I like the smell of the tomatoes and things like that. And then we're going to give this a good dollop of black pepper. And again, guys, if you look how many ingredients, tomatoes, peppers, tuna, I mean, there's really nothing much in this dish. So it makes it an inexpensive dish um, to make. And it's quick, it's easy to have it for lunch. You can have it for um, adding the black pepper. And again, I love my black pepper. If you wanted to make this dish a spicy tuna, you could add cut up chilies and add some fresh chilies in here to give it a bit of spice. Again, then you have nice spicy tuna but today we're making a nice simple dish so guys we're gonna let this tomato cook for a good 15 minutes I want that tomato flavor to cook up with that uh, chicken stock that black pepper and of course that Italian herb and you can see that sauce is looking absolutely beautiful and you can smell that tomato cooking so let's give this a chance to cook and we shall and after this, guys, there's not too much more to do. I mean, it's literally almost done. And that's how quick and easy it is to make tuna pasta. So let's let that cook for 15 minutes and we shall come back to it. Have a look at this. This sauce is looking amazing. It's a little bit thick. So what I'm going to do is add about a quarter cup of water just to give it a little bit of sauciness. And it's looking and smelling absolutely lovely. Now, I have the three tins of tuna, and you can see it's um, a bit of crushed tuna. And just to let you know that canned tuna is actually has less mercury than normal. So I have taken some of the oil out. We're just going to throw the tuna into there. You'll notice this one, I didn't take the oil, so that's going to add some extra fishy flavor to the, to the dish. And obviously the more tuna you like, you can add more tuna, but I like to taste the tuna in my, in my pasta, and, and of course... So I like that. Now this is just about done. So all we're going to do is cook this through. And if you want to make it really red, um, you could add tomato paste, which will give it a really red, saucy flavor. But we're not trying to make a bolognese sauce. But if you like lots of tomato, um, go ahead and add it in. You know, it will be it'll add some flavor. So we're going to let that cook probably for about another five minutes and we're going to get that pasta into the water and guys it's so simple can you see my Facebook how terrible I am it is such a simple dish easy to make I mean you saw how simple ingredients very healthy dish um, and of course you know fish is good for you I said to you that it was low in mercury it's good for bone density etc it's high in protein so this is a wonderful dose of protein to the body. So guys, we're going to let that cook for about five minutes. We're going to get that pasta in. And once the pasta is ready, we're going to put the dish together and show you what it looks like. So let's give that a chance to cook and we'll come back to you now. All right, people, the sauce is looking amazing, nice and glistening. And the water is boiling. So we're going to add that packet and a half. Remember what I said, the water has to be absolutely boiling. We're going to add about a tablespoon of olive oil. Now remember, I never measure with the spoon, but if you really wanted to be careful with that. And that is to stop the spaghetti from sticking. Now remember, you don't have to um, use spaghetti. If you're not using spaghetti, you don't need to add the oil. The oil is just for the spaghetti. So let's give that a chance. I'm going to add that spaghetti now. 
It's fine. All right, as you can see, the water is boiling, so we're going to add a packet. And yeah, you can see we're not going to break them. We're just going to leave them like that. And of course, a packet and a half. Remember, we're cooking for about six to seven people. And we're just going to let that settle down and cook. So that's going to take about 15, 10 to 15 minutes because it's good quality pasta. And then we'll mix it up. And we'll show you how delicious is our pasta. So let's let that cook. Guys, we're in the final stages. Now, this is my little secret ingredient. Black olives in the seed. So just to add some color and excitement to the dish, we're going to add about a half a packet of those black olives. Just going to let them cook through and warm through. And look at that. It is looking amazing and smelling good. So while that is warming up, we're going to put the pasta in the bowl and I'm going to show you how to mix it up with, of course, my favorite cheese, which is the pecorino. So let's go and do that now. Hi right, guys, as you can see, we have our cooked pasta. Now, once you put it in the bowl, it gets kind of sticky. So what you want to do is you want to try and grab some of that oil just to coat that pasta. So you always want to add the parts with the most oil. So it gives it a nice glistening, as you can see. looks delicious let's add that sauce in look at that looks amazing remember I said if you wanted to make it more of a red sauce you could add the tomato paste and of course we're not going to do that now look at this messy cook again once more time let's turn it around so you guys will make a hell of a mess for you people and so there you have your basic tuna pasta and if you wanted to make it a pasta al forno, you could just add the cheese, mix it up, put it in the oven, and make it a pasta al forno. So there you go. And one of the most important ingredients here is, of course, our pecorino cheese. And you know, I am a big, big supporter of pecorino. And if you like your parmesan, that's absolutely fine. And finally, for serving, just to give your dish some color and excitement. Presenting your tuna pasta dish. Jackie, this one is especially for you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching me cook, being messy, as you can see right here. But that's me, the messy cook. So guys, have a good one and we'll see you on our next video. Ciao.